What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked On NBA, the biggest stories with the local experts. I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, also host of Locked On Rockets right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Today, we're chatting with Ed Oliver of Locked On Wizards as the Wizards find themselves in an absolute tailspin, having lost their last five games in a row, including blowing a 35-point lead against the LA Clippers with no Paul George and no Kawhi Leonard. Is it time to hit the panic button in Washington. Should the Wizards be moving on from Bradley Beal or should they try to retool around him at the NBA trade deadline? But first, a quick message from our friends over at Built Bar because look, it's the new year. So that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure you include Built Bar in your plan. Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, maybe even better than a candy bar. Built Bar makes it easier to stick to your New Year's resolutions because it tastes so good, you'll want to eat it. Unlike other protein bars, which can be gritty or chalky or the consistency is just a little bit off. Often. Don't let me don't don't even get me started on the flavors that Bill Bar has to offer: strawberry, cookies and cream, mint brownie, peanut butter. My personal favorite, coconut brownie chunk. You can't go wrong with a single bar on their menu. Every single bar, low cal, low sugar, high protein, high fiber. Great if you're trying to cut back a little bit. Great if you're on a keto diet. And you can check them out. Just go to built.com and use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your very next order of the best tasting protein bars on the market. Again, that's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. Joining us now is one half of the Locked On Wizards podcast, Ed Oliver. Ed, after such a promising start to the season for this Wizards team, they're now 23 and 26, just outside of the play-in tournament, riding a five-game losing streak, including, unfortunately, a blown 35-point lead against the LA Clippers that David Aldridge referred to as the most pathetic performance that he'd ever seen in almost 40 years of being around and covering the Washington Wizards. Ed, what's been the biggest change in how the Wizards started the season to, to where they find themselves at right now? Um, I would definitely say defense. When we started out 10-3, we played really well defensively. Um, offensively, we weren't a good three-point shooting team, and we had a, we were slow in pace. We didn't have a lot of fast break points either. Um, but I, I would say the chemistry. The chemistry is not working well. Bradley, Bill, and Spencer Dinwiddie, when they play with each other, they don't play well. Spencer Dinwiddie plays really, really well. He averages about 23 points when Bradley, Bill does not play. And then when Bradley, Bill, and Spencer play together, he's averaging about 10 points per game. So uh, there's a disconnect there. Um, there's a lot of guys that need playing time, and they're trying to – looks like they're trying to showcase guys before the trade deadline. Matras Harrell. Um, Hollow Neto, Aaron Holiday, Bertans, different guys like that. And we just got Rui and Thomas Bryant back. So uh, we have about 11 or 12 guys that are fighting for minutes right now. Daniel Gafford now was benched against the Grizzlies. So it's just a lot of guys and only one basketball to go around. Bradley Bill's not playing at a high level this year either. He he, he probably will not be making the All-Star game. He made the All-Star game the past two seasons. You know, I'm, I'm glad you brought up kind of the, the dynamic between Beal and, and Dinwiddie because, you know, on paper, you think that, that that duo would actually probably have some success working with each other. But Dinwiddie especially has just been, you know, really struggling and especially over the course of this recent losing streak. Is there a better way for this Wizards team to utilize him? Maybe, you know, bring him off the benches like a six man? I think so. Uh, you look at his time in Brooklyn with the Nets when he played with D'Angelo Russell, he played with Karis LeVert and different guys, he even played with Kyrie Irving when Kyrie was there for that one year uh, or when Spencer and Kyrie were there for that one season. Uh, Spencer did his best work coming off the bench as a six man. Now, he had a couple of good games when, you know, Kyrie was injured and Kevin Durant didn't play, so he was able to step up when other guys were out. Um, and that's kind of the sense here, you know, when Bradley Bill's out, that's when he plays better. So I think he would be better suited to come off the bench and go up against some backup point guards in that second unit where he, he would be able to excel and play well. And he is coming back from the ACL injury, so he still doesn't look 100% um, there athletically. But honestly, when Bradley Bill doesn't play, it looks like he's a different guy. He looks more upbeat and more athletic for some reason. So um, I just think the, the chemistry with him and Bradley Bill just hasn't worked out. But to answer your question, yes, I, I think it would be better to see him come off of the bench. You, know, you mentioned so many different guys kind of coming back into the lineup and trying to get get minutes allocated for everybody. And I think one of the storylines as of late has been, you know, obviously Thomas Bryant making his way back into the lineup after uh, the successful, you know, rehab and everything. But it's it's come at the expense of minutes for Daniel Gafford. What's been going on with kind of that that fight for minutes at the center spot? You've also got Montrezl Harrell back there. Like like what is what is happening on the back lines as far as trying to allocate the minutes for for those guys? 
Yeah, so it's been a, a really um, interesting dynamic there. So uh, Daniel Gafford, who is our starter uh, for the majority of the season, he, um, he got a DMP, a coach's decision DMP. Uh, last night against the Memphis Grizzlies, where we lost by we lost exactly by twenty points on Saturday night, um, and he's been our best re- rim protector, and he's been our best rebounder as well. He's been our best defensive big, and uh, it was really a head scratcher because the the Memphis Grizzlies got sixty rebounds to our thirty seven. Stephen Adams got ten offensive rebounds, which is just incredible. And uh, Montrezl Harrell, he's a great offensive guy, but you know sometimes there's mismatches because he's he's six seven at at best against other centers that are seven feet tall. So um, Thomas Bryant and and Gafford and Montrez, they've been fighting for minutes. It's hard to play three centers, especially in today's game. So um, Weston So Jr. said he was looking for more energy, but that kind of didn't make a lot of sense because Daniel Gafford is an, he's an energy big. So um, it's three guys fighting for minutes. I do think one of the, one of the three it will. Daniel Gaffer signed an extension so he cannot be traded due to the CBA rules um, before January, before February 10th, the trade deadline. So one of the two centers between Thomas Bryant and Montrose Harold most likely will be traded before February 10th. That's a good jumping off point because I, I want to get into the trade deadline stuff, but I, I will say I, I thought that Gafford has done a, a really a solid kind of an exceptional job really filling in in that, you know, in that five spot in the absence of, of Thomas Bryant. And, you know, I feel I feel for the guy, you know, wanting to get Thomas Bryant reacclimated, get him back involved with the team. But for Gafford to, you know, be the guy getting kind of shafted and, and losing out on his minutes and realistically a rotation spot potentially that's tough to stomach but you mentioned you know one of those guys one of the other guys may be out the door who's on the trading block going into the deadline for this wizards team is it, is it everybody is it is it kind of a question of what what do we do now has has the panic button been hit for this wizards team to where there's a potential for bradley beal to be on the way out are they looking to maybe blow things up and move on from him or is it you know can we retool and put the right pieces around bradley beal and try and get this thing back on track yeah, so there was actually a report from Zach Lowe that came out on Saturday afternoon. Um, he said that everybody is available except for Bradley Bill. So Bradley Bill's the only body, he's the only person on the team that is not on the trade block at the moment. Um, so as of right now, Tommy Shepard wants to keep Bradley Bill. Bradley Bill is eligible for a max deal, which would be five years, two hundred forty-five million dollars once the season ends. Um, so he he wants to build around Bradley Bill. That's that's what we're hearing from the from the general manager Tommy Shepard for the Washington Wizards. So. Um, you know, we'll see. It's interesting. I mean, everybody's on the block except for um, except for Bradley Bill and Daniel Gafford. So um, it, it, it's it, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Um, Bill and Bradley that, Bill. Is that the right call? Is that the right call to to want to yeah. stay committed to Bradley Bill? In my opinion, Bradley Bill. He's he's a good, he's a great player. He's an all star. He did make All NBA last season, but I don't see him as a number one option uh, this year. He certainly has not played like it. So um, if, if the goal is to win a championship, I don't see Bradley Bill being a number one option on a championship team. So at amidst, you know, all of this recent mess with the with the Wizards and the downtrend, unfortunately, in the standings, is there, you know, flashing sirens, panic button, you know, all the alarm bells ringing? Is there a silver lining that you can point to something that is a positive thing that can be taken away, at least recently? Um, not a lot to be honest. They're on a five game losing streak right now. And then they play the Bucks on TNT on Tuesday night. They play the Suns after that. And then we play the Nets. Um, and we play the Sixers with Joel Embiid. So the next five games are against teams that are going to be contending for the championship. So it could easily be a 10 game losing streak in the next five games. Also, they just got bounced out of the uh, 10th seed. So they're out of the play- playing spot. Uh, right now. So things are just in a downward spiral. Um, Spencer Dinwiddie was quoted to say um, this, he's a, he's in an interesting situation. He spoke up a little bit earlier on this season, but what he said was not necessarily welcomed. Um, so this was a quote from him talking about leadership, that guys were not happy with, you know, things that he said in the past. So um, the locker room looks, it looks kind of lost right now. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, there's a lot of chemistry issues. We've had KCP and Montres Harrell got into a fist fight. Davies Bertans and Denny Avdia got into a fight where they get, had to be held back. So there's been two scuffles already um, so far this season, and we're not even at the All-Star game yet. I know fights happen with every team, but right now it just looks like a lot of individuals. Bradley Bill was quoted to say it looks like guys are on agendas, right? Different agendas. We got guys on expiring deals. This is what Bradley Bill was quoted to say in an interview as well. So um, the chemistry is off right now. Um, we're lacking leadership right now. We're lacking chemistry. 
Um, looks like guys are kind of on their own, doing their own thing right now. So there's really not uh, much positive to say, honestly, uh, with the Washington Wizards at the moment. Oh man, I, I wanted I wanted to be able to extend the olive branch <laughs> and like give you a lifeline there to to maybe throw in something, chime in something of positive note. But right. you know, highlighting all those different things, I, you know, I don't want to be. I don't want to be too harsh on him because, you know, mm-hmm. rookie campaign as a head coach, but how much of the blame at this point, you know, needs to be shouldered by, by Wes Unsell Jr. You know, is it, has he lost the locker room at this point? Yeah, we, we, uh, we just made a podcast. We just made an episode. Um, I want to say on Thursday, uh, the question was, has Wes Unsell Jr. lost the locker room? And I think right now, um, it, it, it kind of does look lost to be honest. And I'm rooting for Wes, you know, his dad, Wes Unsell Sr., won our only uh, franchise championship back in 1978. So I'm rooting for him. Of course, you know, the family connection, but um, he's a rookie coach and um, his voice is not really being heard by the players right now. They're not listening to him right now. So um, we got a lot of veterans that have chips on their shoulders and guys who have egos. And it uh, looks like they're just, they're not really connecting with Wes Nelson Jr. right now for some moment, for a moment, uh, for some reason. Um, you, if, you, if you watch the Clippers game where we lost, where we were up 35 points and lost, um, Tyron Lue made better adjustments than Wes Unser Jr. He took Reggie Jackson out the game. He took um, Eric Bledsoe out the game. He sat down uh, Zubac, and some of the younger guys were playing better. Isaiah Hardenstein was was uh, scoring a lot against us. Luke Kennard hit the game winning shot. You know, and we lost to a team without Paul George and without Kawhi Leonard. And you know, a lot of that was on coaching, making adjustments, not sending Spencer Dinwiddie, not playing Daniel Gafford more. So a lot of that is on Wes Unser Jr. Just making simple adjustments and. Simple rotation moves as well. I think Wes Unsell Jr. has uh, dropped the ball in a couple of games this year so far. Well, you're going to keep us posted on everything Wizards over at Locked On Wizards. Ed, appreciate you stopping by Locked On NBA with me. Yep. Thank you for having me on.